This conference will now be recorded. Uh, because we had to cut back on them through several of the surges of COVID. Um, we have we still have COVID positive patients in house. Uh, today we have two. Um, and we are still seeing patients that become ill enough that we're needing to transport them to Portland. Uh, Portland hospitals are still very busy, very full, and uh, it takes a while for us to be able to transfer a patient away from here a lot of times. Um, that's the inpatient side of things. Uh, from an outpatient standpoint, we had held our three booster shot clinics for the COVID vaccine for our um, caregivers here. And so we had good turnout for that. And uh, we last Saturday had our first pediatric clinic uh, for COVID vaccines and had 300 children get vaccinated. So that was very exciting. And I think that's what I've got. Okay, great. Uh, how about you, Jason? Um, let's know what you have from uh, Providence. Sure, thanks. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. So, yeah, um, we're just just like uh, CMH, uh, Providence Seaside has been pretty busy. Um, our inpatient census has been high, but manageable. Uh, the good news is, is we've seen a real decrease in COVID positive patients. We don't currently have any. When we do, it's maybe one to two at a time. Um, we're also seeing some delays in transferring patients to Portland, but it feels like it's getting better. Um, so that's the good news. Um, we're really enjoying the partnership with CMH for the NAP clinic. Uh, that's going well. Um, and then uh, we also participated in some uh, doing some booster or doing uh, vaccinations for kiddos uh, at the local high school. And then um, We've been doing our own uh, booster uh, for Moderna and for Pfizer for our employees. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, things are getting back to our new normal, if that makes sense. You know, I think uh, I think this is kind of where we, where we live now, kind of managing and, and uh, bracing for the next uh, spike if there is one. Hopefully there won't be. Okay, great. Thank you. And I see Margo's joined us. Um, Margo, do you have any uh, uh, opening uh, remarks uh, this morning? Um, just that we are continuing. Um, we have five uh, COVID response operations continuing. Um, the booster clinics are uh, full and busy. We continue to do Pfizer drive throughout at Camp Relia. And then um, we have a Wednesday evening clinic at the fairgrounds. Um, monoclonal uh, clinic is operating and we are um, administering it for physician orders for um, referred patients. Um, we're still waiting, public health is still waiting for its pediatric vaccine uh, allocation, uh, but thankfully Providence has its vaccine now and is able to um, support the pediatric population as well as Columbia Memorial Hospital had a very successful clinic last week. Um, so I think we just continue to collaborate and partner with our schools and uh, make sure that anyone who wants a booster uh, will be able to get it with minimal um, barriers to access. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, I guess so. We'll go with uh, Eric uh, Bengal from the Astoria. Do you have any questions for, uh, for our participants? Uh, yeah, thanks. Sorry, I wasn't quite able to make out um, what Jason was saying, so sorry if you already answered this. Um, are, are either of the hospitals experiencing an increase in hospitalizations, or is there anyone hospitalized right now for COVID? This is Jason. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, let me crank up the volume. Thank you. Yeah, so I think... I think uh, I can speak for Judy. We're both seeing an increase in uh, our census. It's been higher than, than usual, but it's been manageable. For us, we still are seeing some COVID patients, but not a lot, like one or two at a time. Uh, and right now, currently, we, we do not have any COVID positive patients. 
Okay, so an increase in census, you mean an increase in non-virus cases? Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, we're seeing an increase in uh, if, if patients coming in that, that are not uh, COVID positive, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're seeing something very similar. We are seeing a steady number of COVID patients. It's typically around two to three. Um, at a time uh, per day, but uh, right now I think we have two in house, and um, we're seeing lots of other patients with lots of other illnesses as well, and very busy. Okay, so you have two hospitalizations. Sorry, at at CMH. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Jacob Lewin, uh, can you hear? And uh, do you have a, any questions? Yeah, uh, if if it's okay, I've got several questions. Maybe I could ask them all now and then hang up the phone and listen through the computer just in case I'm responsible for the feedback that we seem to be getting or I'm, I'm hearing here. Okay? Sure, uh, so I wanted to, wanted to know, um, it, it look, looking at the state numbers, it seems that Clatsop County is one it's doing amongst the best. Sometimes we're number one in the lowest number of new cases per capita. And, and I wondered what, if you had any insight onto why that might be. I also wanted to find out a little bit more about the boosters. Um, I, I had tried to get a booster uh, from uh, our doctor's office, and they still have not called to schedule anything. So I wonder if there is by any chance a shortage of supply of the booster uh, vaccine. And um, also was wondering about this 100 empl uh, plus employee mandate. I know it's stalled now, but are we seeing that with our employers who have more than 100, I guess with the paper mill and fish processors, maybe some others, uh, what, are, what are they doing? And the last question, sorry to have so many, uh, is this situation what we're seeing right now, uh, is it much different than what we'd see in a bad flu season, uh, including hospitalizations? So if it's okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang up then and just listen back through the computer. Okay, thank you. I guess we'll let each of you uh, take a stab at those if, if, as they apply at, to your uh, to your organization. So, uh, um, if, if you've got all those questions uh, uh, written down, well, I'll start. Um, some of them seem kind of those general population-based questions. So, the decreased number of cases. I think it's a credit to sort of a multifaceted approach um, uh, to preventing the spread, the community spread. Um, you know, our vaccination rate continues to increase. We know that those who are vaccinated and have, co have had COVID um, have even a stronger antibody response. Um, the mask mandate is still in place. School districts are doing a really good job of managing uh, that within the school setting and the complexity of doing it in the school setting. We know that the cases are more sporadic and, um, and what we call community spread or in, within a household. Um, we have more and more people getting vaccinated. Um, and then of course some with, um, you know, uh, would prefer just to rely on their natural immunity as well. We do have breakthrough cases and at our testing of it, you know, we we're testing still Monday through Friday. Um, while the number of people being tested right now has decreased, although I expect it to go up during the holidays, um, uh, we're still getting, you know, um, you know, some are vaccinated, some are not vaccinated. So we're still seeing those breakthrough cases. But one would expect an overall, hopefully at this point in time, uh, especially with additional third dose or booster clinics and now the pediatric vaccination uh, being um, available in the community, that we will have a decrease in cases. Um, I'm not sure why your provider um, hasn't uh, doesn't hasn't called for you about a booster. Um, there's definitely a sufficient supply of Pfizer and Moderna. We have plenty of doses. Um, they are changing again the packaging of um, the the number of doses in the Moderna vial. Um, 
So there'll be some switching out of those files, um, at least for us, um, and how it's delivered. Uh, but there's um, there's an adequate supply, and we do get a weekly update from OHA um, of listed providers um, within the community, um, how private clinics are scheduling patients and whether they're doing walk-in or scheduling them for appointments. I, I, I can't answer that question. I'll defer to my colleagues. Um, on the, the federal policy about 100 plus employees, I know that those conversations are beginning to happen. I'm not receiving any calls um, at this point in time from, in, from employers um, who have concerns about this. Um, I do know that the employers that I have worked with with just the mandates regarding um, healthcare workers uh, having to be vaccinated, um, we still check in with one another um, for those who are affected and, and serve in, in other parts of the community. Um, and again, you know, it's a requirement of Medicare and Medicaid as well. Um, so just making sure those um, uh, there's compliance with that or a plan for those who are exempt. And uh, Jason or Judy, if you, I didn't know if you had any uh, response to either of the, any of the questions. Well, Margo did a great job filling those questions. And I think really the one that kind of pertained to, to Judy and I was, the, does it feel uh, you know, busier than you know, maybe like a heavy flu season? And right now I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's busy, but it's not unmanageable. I think from, from our end, this is, I, I, prefer to be in this state than where we were a couple months ago. So um, yeah, I don't think it I don't think I'm seeing we're seeing anything that's um, too significant like that. So that's good. Yeah, I agree with Jason. I but I do think if you take the whole Delta variant surge that we saw that started in August, the the whole picture is much worse than a normal flu season, especially from a hospitalized patient standpoint. Um, but as it stands right now, it's definitely manageable, busy but manageable. Okay, thanks. And do we have any other uh, reporters on the call besides uh, Eric and uh, Jacob? Okay, it doesn't sound like we do. Uh, Eric, do you have any uh, other questions? Uh, what's the biggest concern right now where COVID is concerned? Thank you. Well, from you know our perspective, uh, I, I think we well we all all of us most of us are appreciating sort of the. Uh, the relative calm and that kind of that evaluation and impact of all of these various interventions um, at, that we have available in the community. We've also been humbled by this pandemic and that at least I'll speak for myself and in, in what we speak, talk about in public health is and the questions I get is that we don't want to get too comfortable right because we really don't know what's going to happen uh, people forget that as long as this has been going on we're still learning new things for the first time right with the boosters with having the pediatric vaccine right different so it's 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 definitely uh monitoring the situation being diligent taking time to evaluate. And I think having, I think for us having monoclonals now available in the community and, and this, uh, this joint operation has, uh, um, that was a missing piece and it's working very well. Um, and then also pediatric vaccines, having the pediatric vaccines here in the community is, it's, it's huge. So that, that's my, my answer to your question. I think that's well said, Margo. And I think maybe just one other thing that I would say is that uh, one of our biggest worries is the long-term effects of the pandemic and what it's done to the workforce, especially the healthcare workforce. Uh, going forward, I don't know that we'll be the same ever again. Uh, people are very tired and stressed and 
it's hard to see that every day at work in the people who are caring for our patients. And, you know, out here on the coast, we're a little bit sheltered. We're not seeing as much as they do in the big urban centers, but it's still stressful. And just that, what's that really going to do to people who are um, in a help, helping profession? Yeah, I think well put by Margo and Judy. I think it's it's hard because you know right now we're 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 seeing that kind of downward slope of Delta, and instead of celebrating, what we're telling our team is let's be ready, right? Let's be ready for the next one. It's not yes, yeah, it's just win, um, because we can't we can't afford to let our guard down right now. I think that would be my big message: is we can't we can't afford to let our guard down. We need to be ready. Um, stay vigilant and, and that doesn't feel good you, you want to get to that point where you just kind of celebrate okay this is finally over um, and that's why I say kind of settling into our new norm just staying ready for uh, what might come um, and then like Judy said you know kind of looking at the future what, what is it that nursing and healthcare is going to look a lot different as people make that decision that this isn't the field for them anymore so um, yeah, so it's, uh, I think, a lot of unknowns. I think that's what COVID has given to us is, is a lot of unknowns. So before, we had kind of a well-worn path. So. Yeah, I think, you know, yesterday I and my hospital colleagues um, as well have represent representatives on the hospital preparedness organization, and we had our regional monthly meeting yesterday, and the whole focus was on winter weather. And so hospitals, medics, kind of all the different sectors that uh, are part of a, an effective healthcare response um, during the winter time, reporting on how they're preparing for winter weather. And, and I think that's what we forget about. We just get so focused on COVID and yet our ability to respond is uh, affected by so many different variables, right? And we thought about fires in the summertime, right? And, and now, as I was listening to all of uh, the different sectors and ambulance and EMS and uh, just discussing their, about what their plans are, um, and part of it was agency nursing and medical staff because health systems, hospitals are bringing in staff from other places or and making sure that transportation, reliable transportation is consistently available so that, that we do have adequate staffing during winter weather. So it's, it's not just COVID, it's everything else um, around it, including the approaching winter weather, as we learned with a little bit of flooding down south on my way home on Friday. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, any final questions uh, from any of our reporters? Sorry, so I got. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. Let me. This is Nancy Long. I wanted to mention that you can get a booster shot at any of our outpatient pharmacies, um, hospital, the Columbia Memorial. I would assume, Jason, something is set up there as well. But our outpatient pharmacies are doing 20 a day, and you have to call in advance and just pick the day. You don't have to pick a time, but that's open to anyone. So if you need in, more information, let me know. Great, thank you, Nancy. Call the pick, 325-8500, and they're updated almost daily with who's providing vaccines in the community. Uh, Eric, I think you had a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to clarify. I heard two COVID hospitalizations currently at CMH. I didn't quite get the number from Providence. Eric, yeah, right. Currently, we don't have any COVID positive patients. None. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, any last questions? All right. Any last uh, comments uh, from our three folks? All right. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, um, tuning in uh, today, and uh, we will see you later.